What's going on guys? My name is Mark Wagner, sitting in a different environment but still bringing you the same straight value that I always do. In this video, I'm going to be sharing how I made my first million dollars in revenue in dropshipping. And honestly, this is a really, really important video. I feel like I say that a lot, but seriously, like your first million is hard and that's just million revenue. Million profit's a whole nother story. Um, not there yet, but going to make a video on it when I am for sure. But anyway, if you guys haven't seen my last video, I basically broke down how I was able to make my first 10K with drop shipping and now I'm gonna be doing it with a million and basically just sharing the biggest things that I learned and the things that would help me get there way, way, way quicker if I knew them a lot sooner. So yeah, let's go ahead and uh, hop right into it. All right, so in the spirit of full transparency, I've made just about $3 million in revenue with drop shipping, but that first million took me way longer than the other two. That first million took me years and years and years and years, and this year I've done a couple million in revenue to date. So it's really just a momentum game once you get that first one over with. And um, honestly, I really just recommend that if you're not like, if you're, if you're a completely beginner and drop shipping, this video may not apply to you. Um, it's going to be the 10K video. That's going to help you out. But right now, I'm sharing more advanced strategies, like really advanced strategies that no other drop shippers share. Uh, that are, it's going to help to you. All right. Okay, so in the spirit of full transparency, I made about $3 million in revenue with drop shipping, but that first million took me way longer than the others. That took me like three, four years to do, and the others, I mean, I've, do, I've done a couple a couple million this year in revenue alone. So it's really just a momentum game after you get that first one down. But I do wanna say that this video isn't going to be the most beginner friendly. I'm gonna talk really fast like I'm doing right now and I'm also gonna be sharing like definitely some more advanced strategies. So if you are more of a beginner, I definitely encourage you to watch this video, but I think you're gonna get a lot more of applicable information out of the last video where I tell you how to make your first 10K drop shipping. So, Without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into some advanced strategies that literally no one else shares about dropshipping on YouTube because it's worth a lot of money, frankly. So yeah, the number one thing is that you need to build your team. Um, I really underestimated this. I figured, you know, when I'm making 30K profit a month and I'll be able to justify hiring someone for 2K a month and that is a, that's a fucked mindset, okay? Don't, don't do that. Hire people as soon as you can afford to do so. VAs are okay at first. In fact, VAs are highly recommended at first. I still have plenty of VAs. Um, but after that, like after your first couple of VAs, you need to get people that are very, very skilled in what they do. I'm not talking like customer service guys from the Philippines. I'm talking like highly advanced and trained people from wherever. They can be virtual. I'm not saying that they can't be. Personally, my team is not virtual. Uh, I have like eight virtual assistants and then I have currently like seven employees um, in a physical office belt eight minutes down yonder and um, that's really 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 helped me out and I think if I did that a lot sooner I would be worth a hell of a lot more money today so ideally what you're gonna want to do in order to take yourself to the next level is outsource everything that's not exponentially making you money so what that means is that you really should never even think about the like menial tasks or whatever that come with dropship. And you shouldn't think about customer service. You shouldn't think about posting on social media. You shouldn't think about really doing anything. The things that you should be concerned about originally are like the, uh, the more advanced tasks, like email marketing, media buying, stuff like that. Content creation, that's a big one. Um, you really should at first do all those tasks and then you should just knock them out one by one in order of what you're not good at. So if you're really good at content creation but you suck at media buying and you hate it, then outsource media buying and then vice versa and just keep building that up until you have hired specialists or trained specialists in order to do things like email marketing, media buying, influencer marketing, all that kind of stuff for you and that's just going to explode your income. The first things that you should outsource before all the more advanced tasks include stuff like customer service, product research, chargebacks, video editing, and honestly, content creation as well. If you're good at content creation, then by all means, do it yourself. 
but I think content creation is just cheap to outsource. So it's really, really highly recommended that you do that. Um, now I still shoot videos myself sometimes, but right now I have like a, a full content team. Before I had people in an office that were like videographers and shit, um, I had like a, a virtual, well, not really virtual assistant, he was just a virtual employee and he helped me out because he was good at video editing and uh, basically just like kind of combining clips from different sources on the internet. I don't really do that anymore, I kind of try not to. Um, and I would recommend that you don't do that, but if you're gonna do that, which you probably are right now anyway, then hire someone to do it because it's really, really time consuming to go find the right videos and then edit them and combine them and make three different variations and test it all. It basically limits the amount of products that you can test per week because you have to worry about a hell of a lot of other things besides that. So that was one of the biggest things for me that exponentially transformed my income because it allowed me to test more products per week. All right, so I talked a shit ton about team and there's a reason for that. So just keep in mind, building your team is extremely important and it should be a high priority once you're doing a couple thousand in profit a month. All right, so the second thing that is really, really going to help you out in making that first million dollars dropshipping is putting your product tests on a schedule. If you don't have a schedule and you're anything like me, you're simply not going to get it all done. So if you just tell yourself, I'm going to test one product a week, I'm going to test two products a week. I'm going to test 10 products a week. However many products you can comfortably handle every single week, week after week, month after month, year after year, then that's the amount that you should choose, but you need to test, in my opinion, at least one product per week. Personally, I've been doing two products a week since like September 2019. I've missed very few weeks, and because of that, I have found way more winners than when I just tested products and didn't have to put it on a schedule. Also, you get very accustomed to this and your team gets very accustomed to this, so it helps everything flow a lot better if you know that every Monday you're gonna look for content, every Tuesday you're gonna edit that content, every Wednesday you're gonna get your ad copies and your product page done, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and you could just knock everything out, boom, 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 and again, increase the amount of products that you can effectively test. All right, so the next thing that you really need to keep in mind in order to hit that milestone, whatever it is for you, is that you need to test different styles of creative. For me personally, I've said this many times before on my channel, but my main winner, which has generated over 1.2 million to date, I tested it three times and it flopped for me. And then I tested it a fourth time with a completely different style of creative that I kind of, um, I just got some inspiration from a competitor, we'll say that, but it took off. So I tested three different creatives and like completely different creatives and then I just tested it like a new different style of ad that I never tried out before and it just like blew up and look at me now, 1.2 million in sales kind of speaks for itself when you compare that to like no sales for months and months and months before that. So. I definitely think it's really, really important to make your ads not feel like ads and also to have a lot of variation whenever you're testing creatives and honestly just understand the importance of testing different creatives. All right, so the next thing we're getting into more of like the mental portion of things, which is honestly way more important than the actual like drop shipping side of things. And this is to be a completionist. It, there's just so many moving pieces to this business. It's really, really hard to get to, sorry, it's really, really easy to get distracted, especially when you're on YouTube, especially when you're in Facebook groups, especially when you're looking at all these people on the Instagram stories and you're just seeing what they're doing. They're selling masks or they're on Amazon FBA or they're doing this and that and this and that and you simply don't have the bandwidth in order to do that and you're trying to do your own stuff over here but you abandon your own stuff to go do this stuff but you halfway do your stuff and you halfway do their stuff and you end up doing nothing okay so be a completionist that means if you say you're going for a run then go for a damn run and then go rock and go jog another lap just just because you can just because you did 110%, okay? Now obviously, I'm not talking about working out, I'm not talking about jogging, I'm talking about everything that has to do with your business, but if you live it outside of your business, then you're also going to live it in your business. You need to find a very good mixture between completing what you're already doing effectively and also testing new things whilst not not giving up on stuff too early, but also not giving up on stuff too late. 
it, it's a balance. It really is. And I'm not saying life's about balance, but you need to be a completionist first off. And you also need to incorporate new things into your business, your strategy, stuff like that. And it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of bandwidth, which is why I mentioned that having an in-house staff is so effective because some of my people are so like, amazing to the point where I can say, hey, this looks really cool. I think we should look into SMS marketing. Now I'll have to spend two hours of my time doing it because they can do it for me and give me a rundown and start it and do it all themselves. Okay, that's awesome. That's so important, so valuable. And you really need to consider that if you're more of a high level drop shipper. Another thing, definitely mentally, is that you need to play the mental game. Another thing, Super important is that you need to play the mental game. If you focus on developing what's up here, then by default, you're going to develop your business. And one thing that I've learned being in drop shipping for three or four, I don't know, I think it's like four and a half years at this point, don't really care. The number one thing probably that I've taken out of it is that there's always highs and lows, okay? There's always highs and lows. But if your brain is just like, you know, going steadily up, right? You're not like doing meth and, you know, I, I don't care getting cooked out on Friday night, then you're probably going to keep going up. You know, if you keep reading those books, if you keep not doing television or just like insane dopamine things, like if you literally just work on your brain, like you, know, everyone knows what their brain needs. Everyone knows what their body needs. You need good food. You need rest, you need meditation, you need exercise. There's tons of stuff and you know all this, okay? It's not a secret. You just have to do it. You have to understand that if you want to make more money, the way to do that is to improve your brain and improve your body. And if you're making absolutely terrible money in your business, but your body and your brain are steadily increasing, then slowly your business is going to kind of even out and shoot up as well um, in my opinion you can't have either or you know you have to be good like up here and your business has to be good and it, it will coincide if you like work on your body but it won't coincide if you only work on your business and you don't work on yourself I hope that made sense I feel like that was kind of a rant but it's important okay just read books and shit one of the things that I really wanted to say is that one of the biggest ways that's going to allow you to exponentially grow your e-commerce stores is by saving and reinvesting your money. Personally, I got to a point where I don't have to take any money out of my business. I'm good, all my side hustles pay my bills. Um, and yeah, like all the money that I make from my e-com stores are invested back into my e-com stores or occasionally invested into like new ventures, new businesses, new projects, stuff like that. But if you continuously are able to get to that point where you're literally just reinvesting the money that you make, you're simply going to make way more money. If you can think six to 12 months ahead instead of where you are right now, then you're going to make a lot more money. If you're able to invest in something that's not going to pay you for a decent amount of time, but you're good, you're going to make way more money. So in conclusion, I seriously recommend that you don't spend your money. Spend as little as possible, save as little as possible, and reinvest as much as it makes sense. All right, guys, so the last thing that I want to leave you with, if you want to go try to make seven figures with Shopify dropshipping, is that you really need to be diligent. You need to work hard as shit. You need to capitalize on opportunities whenever they arise quickly. And you also just need to have patience. Um, like I mentioned, it took me a long time to make my first million. Um, and then once I made my first million, it took me probably less than six months to make, I mean, I'm almost positive it was less than six months um, to make my second million. And then I know it was less than six months to, actually I haven't made my third yet. Um, I took some screenshots I'll throw up, but those were taken a couple weeks ago. I'll have my third million probably, definitely by the end of the month. So that's cool, but it really doesn't matter. That's not that much money when you think about it. That's all revenue, that's really not profit. So yeah, I mean, can't complain, but you really just need to have patience because it takes a long time to make serious money with dropshipping if you're anything like me. 
So really appreciate you guys watching this video. I hope you got a ton of value out of it. Um, some of it was written down, but a lot of it I was really just spinning because I, I just, I really changed dramatically throughout the process of making my first million dollars in revenue. And again, that's not that much money, but it takes a lot. You literally are brought from pretty much zero to a hundred if you're like me starting off as a broke 14 year old. So it really changes you. Um, and it's not for everyone. It's not, it, it's a hell of a lot of work. So you really have to want it. Like you really, really, really have to want it more than anything else in the world. And you have to work like that. And then it's, it's gonna happen. It's bound to happen. It has to happen. But just be open to changing yourself, your environment, the people around you, your business, everything outside of your business goes into your business. And um, yeah, with that being said, um, I'm gonna continue getting emotional, maybe shed some tears here if I keep going. So I do wanna say thank you again for watching this video. Please feel free to shoot me a message on Instagram. Um, I try to check my DMs like once a week, um, but honestly, I've just been insanely freaking busy the past couple of weeks with the office, new place, um, ton of stuff going on prepping for Q4. You guys don't care about that, but I will try to answer all the DMs I get. So yeah, just shoot me a message if you guys need any help or put a comment down below. And uh, yeah, thank you guys again for watching this video. Hope you have an absolutely amazing day. And once you do hit seven figures in revenue, definitely let me know. Maybe bookmark this video so that you can let me know in the comments. But uh, yeah, see you guys in the next one.